Hey, I'm Chris Zepp from Make Everything, and today I'm making this slab coffee table with CNC cup butterflies. Check it out. All right, so this project is starting with a slab that me and Mac milled last year. This is a beach log that we got from an old estate in my neighborhood. We milled this with my chainsaw mill and it's been sitting inside for a couple months and through that it developed some cracks. I thought this was a good opportunity to try some butterfly inlays with my CNC. So the crack is about 12 inches long and I just sort of laid out a general idea of where I would want the butterflies so I could go onto the computer and lay them out. Now, the machine that I'm using is an X-Carve, and this video is sponsored by Inventables, the manufacturer of the X-Carve. And with the X-Carve comes a piece of software that's uh, internet-based called Easel. And the regular Easel software is free. Easel Pro, uh, you do have to pay for. But even in the free version, you can do sort of basic geometric design. Um, and basically, by moving around shapes and combining them, you can make things like butterflies, um, both traditional kind of, you know, two triangular shaped butterflies or a, you know, non-traditional like the type that I'm going to use that are more two circles with a, a joint. So they have a little tool that is an inlay generator that you can set an offset and basically create your negative cut and your positive inlay all using the software. You put your negative cut on one board and your positive cut on another and then you can cut out your two pieces of material and this was the test cut that I did prior to doing the final piece. And you can see right here, um, this cut fit really well. This is just three quarter inch plywood and I used a uh, 30 thousandths offset and that was enough to really just make it perfect, uh, like a nice friction fit. So I went ahead and made my own sort of butterfly design using two circles and then I drew a rectangle that had some points in the center so I could make this sort of like bent little looking thing and through some tweaking I developed a really nice looking shape that I was very happy with and then after I was done with that I'm able to use the inlay generator again and you know get what I needed to do. So the other nice thing about the X-Carve is that it has an open front meaning there's no rail on the front of the machine so there's really no limit to the length of the board that you could use in a machine like this. This board is like uh, an inch and three quarters thick, which is about as thick as you can go uh, with the size router bit that I'm using. But I just supported the board using one of these little work stands and let it stick out the back. And then I'm just using regular woodworking clamps to keep it down to the actual spoil board. Now the bit I'm gonna be using on this is a quarter inch spiral upcutting bit that was provided by Tools Today. I'm gonna to leave a link in the description as to where you can get one of these. This thing performed incredibly well. Um, it totally exceeded my expectations. It left such a clean cut and it definitely outperformed some of the less expensive bits that I've used in the past. I used my tape measure to check off my rails and make sure that the layout that I intended was gonna work out and I set the machine to work. Um, these butterflies are about three quarters of an inch deep which is probably deeper than I had to go, but I just thought since I was using about three quarter inch material, it might be nice to let the machine kind of really work into it and get a good penetration on such a thick slab. Um, the whole thing was pretty quick, about 22 minutes for it to route out these four butterflies. Um, and since I was using a larger bit, I let it take its time. I had it pull out every single time. It would make you know sort of a dramatic cut. And once that was done, I could pull the slab out of the machine and put in the walnut that I'm going to use for the actual butterflies themselves. Now, like I showed you earlier on the easel software, it kind of does all the work for you. And now I'm terrible at using Adobe Illustrator. So for me to be able to design in this software and have it figure it all out for me is amazing. Um, I laid everything out on a you know simulated piece of walnut on the software. And then I just, again, set the machine to work using the same quarter inch a spiral down cutting bit that I was using before. Uh, there's gonna be a little overlay here of the model number because I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I had my CNC enclosure closed while I was cutting that just to keep the dust down. But with the dust shoe, it really does produce very little dust in the air, which is nice. 
with those cut out, I was able to just do a little test fit and the registration is perfect. I mean, they're so tight that if I push them in any further, I won't be able to get them back out, which is really amazing. Uh, just the fact that the machine is rigid enough to hold those tolerances, I was super impressed. Um, I did want to cut one of the rough ends off the slab, so I took out just my cordless uh, circular saw, my vacuum to keep the dust down, scribed a line, and just made a quick little cut. Nothing crazy. I just sort of wanted to get rid of those rough ends. Uh, I believe those were the original saw cut ends off the log that I milled this from. Now I decided that there were just two other cracks on the other side of the board. I originally wasn't going to do a butterfly here, but after looking at them, I decided that the largest butterfly that I had made for the other side would work well. So I basically repeated the process, put the machine on, and milled out another butterfly area, cut another positive inlay. And now I'm just clearing out all the butterfly spots with the compressed air. I want to make sure that there's no dust or anything in there so I can glue these in and everything's going to sit really tight. I'm using Type Bond 2 wood glue and I'm spreading it with just a little acid brush, making sure that I totally cover all the surfaces so that these things don't go anywhere. Uh, you'll also notice that when I cut the walnut butterflies, I made sure to cut them with the long grain so that they wouldn't split. You know, basically the idea of the butterflies is to keep the log from splitting any further. So you want to have a perpendicular grain pattern on the butterflies just so they don't just break when the main board decides to break. I can use a little hammer here, hammer those in, you can see how tight they are. And then using this uh, on the fifth one, I just a little more glue and hammering that one in. You can see the two cracks that it's sort of straddling and I designed it in a way that it would pull all that mess together and really not let it go anywhere. Now once I was done gluing in the butterflies, I had to do some epoxy work to the top. Now, anytime I do epoxy work to a slab, you know, you'll see a crack in one part of a slab, but, you know, it doesn't necessarily transmit directly through it. So I just use some blue painter's tape and I cover a good portion of the bottom of the slab just so that when I pour my epoxy, it doesn't all just immediately leak out through the bottom. I'm using the Total Boat High Performance Epoxy here. This stuff is fantastic. I've used it on a bunch of projects uh, with the pumps that I get from them. It's a one pump to one pump thing. I do it into a little cup, stir it with a little stirring stick and pour it in to the cracks and voids in the slab. Uh, I've noticed this stuff does not need to be off gassed in a pressure pot. It pours really, really clear. If you sand it up to a high enough grit, it's like totally, totally clear. It's beautiful epoxy. It spreads really well. It's very viscous when you mix it and it gets into all the little nooks and crannies that you needed to so that you can stabilize a slab like this. Now I have to give this epoxy some time to dry. So I head over into my metal shop and I start working on the base. I'm using some 3 8 inch round bar to do a little bit of a, a X-shaped support structure between the legs. So I cut that first while it's on the ground, get that up onto the bench. And this is a pretty simple leg design. I didn't want to do anything crazy. I didn't want to distract from the beauty of the slab itself. I'm using some eighth inch by three inch plate steel here just to make little plates uh, that's gonna be welded to the legs and screwed into the bottom of the table itself. The little porta band makes quick work of these. Cut those up, get them over to the grinder, and deburr them. It's really important anytime you're making a piece of furniture to deburr all your metal if there is going to be metal involved. Just because you know people don't want to reach under a table to grab something and get caught on a piece of you know sharp metal. So I deburr everything, and now I've got to drill holes in them. Now instead of drilling each one of these individually, I throw them in a clamp, and I bring this clamp over to the drill press, and I drill them all clamped together. Um, this is similar to a method I've shown in other videos where I weld the pieces together, but since these are just, you know, uh, eighth inch thick pieces, I'm using a 3 16th drill bit and I'm just basically punching through these four plates so that when I screw them down to the bottom of the table, there is nowhere for them to go. Um, typically with a slab, I'll try to use less screws if I can, because I want to give the slab some ability to move. Um, the base is going to have some rigidity to it once I add the crossbar, so I don't want to keep it too, too tight. 
Um, now I'm using my Ollie Iron squares. These are little corner fixturing squares that I get from Brandon over at uh, Ali Iron. These things are fantastic. I've showed them in a bunch of my videos. They're super versatile, um, and I clamp them down to the table. And then I'm using some self-adjusting welding clamps from Armor Tool. These things are awesome. Um, if you've ever used the vice grip style welding clamps, you know what a pain it can be to screw and unscrew that little tensioning piece on the back um, to make them fit your material. With these self-adjusting clamps from Armor Tool, you literally just grab whatever you want to grab. The only thing you adjust on these is how hard it grabs the material, and, and that's also a super nice feature because you, know, you can make it really hold on to stuff or you can kind of have things held loosely. So. By setting up this little fixture, I just clamp everything and it gives me a perfect 90 degree registration to my plate. Now I wound up having to do these kind of in two little sections because I wanted them to sit sort of on the outskirts of the table. So I did two in one orientation and then I kind of redid my jig and drew some new lines and did two more from the other orientation. I'm welding these up with my Lincoln MP140, uh, the multi-process welder. I've shown it in some other videos. The thing works awesome. It makes quick work of anything that's eighth inch, uh, especially little leg sections like this. And the gun is not too big, doesn't get in the way, and it really just kind of makes the whole process really smooth. Now I have a piece of plywood that's approximately the size of the slab, and that's gonna come in handy here because while I'm waiting, for that epoxy to dry, I can use this piece of plywood sort of as a template to lay these legs out. So I temporarily just screw them into place and then I'm going to use this sort of setup to do the rest of the base and weld in the connecting rods. Like I said, I wanted the base to be super minimal. I didn't want to take away from the attention that the slab deserved. So I'm just using this little 3 8 rod, welding it in on an angle. I had cut these rods long intentionally and I just marked them to exactly where they needed to be, cut them with the porter band, um, and I'll set up a spacer to tack those into place. Now these will get fully welded from the top, but in the meantime, I can basically just grab a piece of scrap metal and hold it up so that I know that I'm at the right height and weld it in on both sides. The 3 8 material is flexible enough that you can kind of do it a little free form. I get a good tack on the bottom and then to do the other crossbar, I again measured and cut it, but then I use a piece of rod as a spacer underneath the other spacer that I used originally so that everything is equal and nothing is being bent. I wanted it to be nice and straight. I didn't want to put any additional pressure on that rod. Once it's welded to the legs, I can go ahead and just sort of weld the center. Um, just two little tack welds on the bottom. This part I didn't fully weld from the top because I didn't want you to see them. Um, the other rod points didn't really matter to me if they were visible or not. And now I go back in with the grinder here and grind out all those welds anyway. But you know, you do want to make sure that the welds that you put in a visible area, like over here on top of the rod, are nice and clean. Uh, you know, want good penetration, no bubbling or any slag or anything. You want to give the cleanest welds you can, especially when you're making furniture. And if you're making anything with a slab and you have to do work while the glue is setting up, I highly recommend getting a piece of plywood set up like this because it definitely saved me a ton of time instead of you know, waiting for the epoxy to dry and messing with it. I was able to do all this work on this plywood and then basically just take the base off and put it on the slab. It was absolutely worth the time. Now I'm using a, a fared flap disc here. I'll put a link in the description. Um, I'm really happy with all the fared braces that I've been using. They just make such quick work of getting off mill scale and prepping this thing for paint. I'm just running through it, grinding out some of my welds and making sure everything's nice and smooth, making sure there's no spatter or anything that's going to ca get caught on somebody's hand or a piece of clothing. Once that's all ground out, I take it outside and I hit it with some Rust-Oleum. Uh, this is the 2X paint that they make, and this is like a satin black. Nothing crazy. Uh, this is a paint and primer in one, and this is an interior application, so I don't worry about priming this in advance. The grinding that I did removed a lot of the mill scale, and then I cleaned it with acetone before I brought it outside just to make sure it was nice and nice and ready to get the paint on it. Now back to the slab with the epoxy dry. I give this stuff a good 24 hours to fully cure up. 
and then I grab my hand scraper, which has a carbide blade in it, and I start scraping down that epoxy. Now, a lot of people go straight for the sander when they do an epoxy job, but what I've found was that the sander can make the epoxy too warm, and then it gets jelly. Uh, and once it's kind of like a jelly consistency, then it's pretty much shot. So I like to scrape off as much of the epoxy as I can and then go in with an 80 grit sanding pad and just bring down the rest of that epoxy down to raw wood. Um, it's really not that long of a process. You know, in this case, I put a lot more epoxy than I really had to. Um, but in the end, it worked out really well and looked nice once we kind of ground through that thin layer of epoxy that I left on the table. Now with that done, I can go over and sand down the butterflies. This is just a super satisfying part, you know, just using an 80 grit sanding disc uh, and then just moving back and forth over the butterflies gets them nice and flush uh, with the top of the piece. Now with the four butterflies over here, I was trying to make sure that my pad was never actually hitting one, you know, directly on because I didn't want to rip the pad. So just sort of you know, taking my time and, and getting this thing down, getting it nice and smooth, making sure that everything is, you know, all nice and level with the top. With the butterfly sanded, I can kind of do a little more finish sanding. I'm going to basically bring this thing up to 320, so I want to sand it a little bit at a time, going from 80 to 120, 220 to eventually 320. Uh, this leaves like a glass finish, so... In between those sandings, though, I did use some Starbond uh, medium black CA glue, and this stuff is really great for filling voids. It's nearly an instant fix, so you fill the void, you spray it with a activator, and then you go back and sand that void, and it's it's gonna hold in there. It's gonna you know leave no visible cracks behind when you're working with natural material. You want to make sure that you don't you know leave a big crack in the middle of your table. You can stabilize it with the CA glue and. It just looked better for your client overall. Now with everything all sanded and smoothed out, I can move over to the finish. I bring the slab over and I put it on top of these little boards and I just make sure that there is no debris or dust inside those cracks. I wanna make sure this thing's nice and clean. I'm using a Wacko Wipe On Poly, this is satin. Um, I apply it pretty liberally, just make sure that I get everything covered. Uh, the first coat I found can be pretty heavy with this because I am going to go back with a 400 grit sandpaper uh, and actually wet sand the top just to make sure it's nice and smooth once most of the polyurethane has dried. I make sure to do the edges and the little bottom edge as well when I'm applying my polyurethane. I want this thing to be protected from sort of those fingerprints under the edge. Uh, make sure everything stays, you know, exactly where it has to be. Um, make sure that none of my polyurethane is dripping underneath as well. It's just sort of checking everything and making sure it's rubbed in nice. Now I give that poly 24 hours to dry and then I spray the board down with some water and I use some 400 grit wet dry sandpaper just to go over the polyurethane that got put on it the day prior. Um, now this gives me a good idea of if there are any spots that need more poly or anything like that. It really feels like glass at this point which is awesome and then we just bring the finish up from there. I flip the slab over to put the legs on now you're going to see here I have four holes for the screws for the legs, but I'm only going to utilize two of them on each leg. Uh, I want the slab to have a little bit of ability to move, and I didn't want to go driving too many of these screws in there just to risk the splitting of the slab itself. But overall, I'm really happy with uh, you know the way the base attached to the slab. I was nervous that it was going to be totally out of level and rock like crazy, but so far it seems pretty good. Now here's something that I learned recently is that you can buy caps for one by one tubing on McMaster. It's like 12 bucks for 50 caps. They fit perfectly inside a one by one with a 16th wall tube and you can also get them for thicker wall tubing. Um, it just saves you so much time and money instead of capping your metal pipes with steel you can just use these plastic things. 
Now, sort of the final finish on this, once the polyed all cured, is a Johnson's Paste Wax. Um, I really like Johnson's Paste Wax just from a finishing standpoint. It just leaves you such a nice, natural finish. And you can buff it in, you can continue to apply it, and then the person whose house this piece is going to go into can you know, have a little bit and they can continue to put some on if they ever want to add a little extra protection. Overall, the contrast that I got between the walnut butterflies and the beach top is way better than I even expected. Um, I'm really, really happy with the way this thing came out. I wasn't expecting uh, the butterflies to work as well as they did, um, but it was a pleasant surprise. Um, and, you know, like I said, I wanted the base to stay nice and minimal uh, and just painting it that satin black. The butterflies on top with the paste wax finish. Overall, I couldn't be happier with this. All right, that about does it for this project. I'm really happy with the way this came out. Um, this is the first time I've ever used my CNC uh, on a project this size. The X-Carve did a fantastic job cutting through this beach and also the walnut. It really kind of outperformed my expectations. I thought it was gonna have some trouble because I did mill those butterflies at three quarters of an inch deep. I wasn't sure how the machine was gonna handle it. It made everything super accurate. Um, the butterflies fit in perfect. And using the easel software to make the butterfly saved me a ton of frustration because, like I said, I'm absolutely horrible at Adobe Illustrator. So being able to do all that stuff kind of in the native program and not have to worry about any design stuff really was great. I can't wait to use the machine on bigger projects like this using the open front and open back design. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you want to check out the X-Carve or the Easel software, there are some links in the description. You can do so. Also, thank you very much to Starbond Adhesives and Total Boat Epoxies for providing me with the super glue and the epoxy that I used to finish the top. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. If you want to see what I'm doing in the shop on a day-to-day -day basis, follow me on Instagram at MakeEverythingShop. I post every day and I answer a lot of questions posts on my stories and um, I'm always kind of showing what I'm up to, whether it's making something or buying tools, stuff like that. So again, I'm Chris Zett from Make Everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks. We're done.